Hey everyone, in today's video, we are making a mixtape. If you don't have cassette tapes, you can get them brand new on Amazon.com. I've got an affiliates link in the description of this video to a five pack of these tapes so you can get right to making your mixtape. But how do I even do that? Let's talk about how you hook this up. So we're coming around back here and as we can see our tape deck has two RCA cables coming out of it. One is for recording and one is for playback. Our receiver has inputs for both of those. So let's read this line out right here. So line out on the cassette deck is gonna go to line in on the receiver. And on this receiver, it's called play. So we're gonna do tape one, play. White goes into the L, red goes into the R. And then for our line in, we're gonna want a line out on the receiver. And that's what's unique about tape decks is they want a record on here so you can actually send your source to the tape deck so it can be burned onto the tape. So we're gonna take the line in from the tape deck. We're gonna to go to record on the receiver. This receiver has two tape inputs and we're gonna use number one. So for the record here, we're gonna to go to number one. Next thing we're gonna need is a source. On this setup, we're gonna record using my phone. So what I've got here is a 3.5 millimeter to RCA cable. It's already plugged in, that's what you see there. And then I've got a little 3.5 millimeter to USB-C. I guess I'll put an affiliates link for these things in the video also, since you might not have one. But this is how you get audio from a modern smartphone onto this. And then of course, hook up your speakers, but they don't reach in this view. I'm gonna do that off camera. Basically what I've just shown is you need a receiver or something that's got tape inputs and inputs for another source. You need a tape deck that can both play back and record, and you need a source. You need something that you want to put onto your cassette tape. So all receivers and all tape decks have very similar controls. The things we're gonna be talking about here are the selector switch, the uh, tape monitor switches, and then we're gonna be talking about everything on here, obviously. Let's start with the tape deck. How do you use the tape deck? Well, obviously you've got your eject button and you use that to put your tape in. We all know what play, stop, fast forward, and rewind do, but this pause key right here, this is gonna be really, really important for what we're doing because basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna control when we're recording and when we're not. So I'll show you. When I've got this record button, I'll push it. Look, it already started moving and it's actually recording whatever's on here right now to this cassette. We don't really want that yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit pause and then the record button. And you see right there, now I've got control. Over here we've got tape select. This is for different kinds of cassette tapes. What I've got here is a normal type. So we'll set this to normal. Dolby noise reduction, I don't know. Out means off, I just leave that off. And then input select, we're gonna do line, which is this thing. We've got a microphone input right here on the right and left. So you could actually take microphones and record whatever's on the microphone to this cassette right here. So that's a neat feature of this particular deck. We're not gonna use it today though. Then we've got our input levels, these two knobs. We'll get into that in a minute. This tape counter right here, basically what it's good for is it tells you where you are in your tape. As you can see, I just set that to zero. And what I'll do is I'll hit play on this tape. I'll unpause it first. And you can see the tape counter moving. I'll hit fast forward. Tape counter moves. So you know, whatever's that, 13 right there, it's kind of coming through with those meters. So I'll rewind to the beginning. There you go, back to the beginning. If you're gonna be writing down all the tunes you're gonna record on your case here, you could write the counter mark on each tune off to the side there. And that makes it a lot easier to know how to get to the song you wanna get to on your tape. Now let's go back to our receiver. We saw that we plugged the phone into the aux input. So we're gonna switch this to aux and it looks like we're already there. I'm gonna pull up everyone's favorite song, Walk Through the Park. And I'll just turn this up and you can hear it playing. It's playing through the speakers. If I switch to the input, it goes away. If I go back, that's what we hear. What's also happening here is this selector knob controls what's going to our tape deck for the recording. So what I'm gonna do 
So I'm gonna hit tape source. We don't hear what's going on in aux anymore because we're hearing exactly what's going to the tape deck. So now watch this. I'm gonna hit pause and I'm gonna hit record. And suddenly we hear the music again. If I do the tape source button, we hear it again. But when we hit tape source, this is what the tape deck is hearing. You can hear it's a little bit louder than it is just going to aux. And that's controlled with these knobs right here. So I've got one for the right and one for the left. What we're doing here is we need to set the proper level for recording. So I'll show you what happens when we turn this all the way up. You know, we're peeking out. We're getting kind of far into the red, the, uh, the 5 dB area. So really what we want is we want the peaks of the music to hit the zero mark. So basically what we're doing is we're bringing these up until we see the peaks of the music making these meters go to about the zero mark. So that's about the eight mark on this tape deck in particular. So that's what I'm gonna do. And the reason you do this is if you have these turned up all the way and you start recording to your tape, it's too loud and you're gonna get distortion and it's not gonna sound good. So we've got the input selected. We're on tape source so we can hear what the tape deck is hearing. We've got our levels set. We've got these turned to the proper settings. But now we gotta get our tape ready. And here's how we're gonna do that. We're going to hit the eject button. And what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of roll the tape a little bit until we see this tape turn black. So I'll show you right here. What you're gonna have to do is you turn this one this way. So the tape starts wrapping around it from this way. It goes like this. And we're gonna do this until we see the dark tape come across the middle right here. Wait for it, and there it is. See that right there? This dark tape is the recordable section of this cassette tape. I'll pull it back in with this one. So basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to cue up this tape so when you hit the record button, you're actually getting music on the recordable section. So let's just make it so this entire length is recordable tape. Now that we've done that, let's put it back in the cassette deck. And now it's the fun part. We actually get to start recording here. So again, let's make sure our pause key is pushed. Let's hit the record key. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it so we start the song after we start the recording. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna release the pause button and then hit go on here. So watch, I'll do that right now. Release pause and hit go. And now it's recording. I'll also note this volume knob right here, it's not really doing anything related to the recording. This is the volume going out to the speakers. So I'm just gonna wait until the song gets to the end part here and then I'll tell you what you need to do. Okay, so we're at the end of the song here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the pause button right when it's over. So wait. Fading out. Song's over. Let's hit stop, unpause. We're gonna rewind the tape and we're gonna see how that went. Let's hit play. Okay, so we're turned up. And there it goes. We're gonna use a record player in a second but I wanna show you the easiest way you can do this today in 2023. What you're gonna do is you're gonna open your Spotify app right here and you're gonna make a playlist. You're gonna add a bunch of songs to your queue. You're gonna make sure they're about 45 minutes combined because that's how much music you can fit on one side of a cassette tape. You're gonna hit play after you hit record on here and then you just walk away. Spotify normalizes the audio level for all the music it's playing, so you don't have to worry about doing your level adjustment. You just do it for one of the tunes, preferably your loudest one, and then hit go and walk away. When your playlist is done or you run out of tape, everything will just stop automatically. But what if you wanna do it the hard way? What if you wanna make a truly authentic 1980s mixtape with vinyl records and pull one tune off of each record? 
I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Now let's say we want to do hard mode and make a mixtape using entirely songs off of vinyl records. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set our receiver to phono with our record player plugged in, and then we're gonna hit the tape source button so we can hear what the tape deck is hearing. So let's take our cassette tape, we'll cue it up, so we'll put that in. Now, let's say we want to record the first track off of this RL pressing of Led Zeppelin 2. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, you know, put on side one because that has the first track. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is set the level on this thing because we wanna make sure we're not recording too loud. So I've got it playing right now and I've got my volume turned down. I'll bring this level knob up and then I'll hit this button because I forgot to hit the record pause button. So we can see if I turn this all the way up, we've got all red bars right there. But if I turn this down, we want to turn this down so we only see red like every once in a while on like the zero dB mark. So still quite a bit of red. Let's get to the noisiest part of the tune, which is probably the end of the song. I've got my level pretty good right here. Yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind. Know the song that you're playing. You know, this is A Whole Lot of Love by Led Zeppelin. And uh, you know, you can do this with the uh, sound on too, but I'm doing it without because this is YouTube. Now that we've got our level set, we want to get ready to record. And we have two choices here. We can either record us dropping the needle or we can not record us dropping the needle. Since it's 2023 and that's kind of a novel thing, I think it'd be cool to record us dropping the needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the start recording button first and then I'm going to drop the needle. If I didn't want that needle drop, I'd drop the needle, make sure it's not playing the song, and then hit the record button before the song actually starts. I'll turn the volume up so you can hear. I'm going to hit the record button and on this deck. We know it's going to record because the record light is lit up. So. Let's do this, hit the play button, and we'll drop the needle. So, we know that it's recording now. So now we just sit here until the song is over. So to speed things up, I'm just going to skip to the end of the song to illustrate my point and what we do next. We're going to listen for the end of the song, so that's the end and hit the stop button. We got the tape stopped at the end of the song. If I hit this button again, it'll go back to the album. So we don't want to keep recording that because we want to move on to our next song. And that song can be whatever you want. I'm choosing to record Disco Ulysses by Wolfpack. So we'll get this out. We know that that song is on side B of this white vinyl and it is track number three. I'll turn this back on, the record button that is. I'll turn this back on, and I'm going to, what I'll probably do with this one is, I'll listen to the end of track two. So this is the end of track two, and I'm gonna listen. How much time do I have between the end of track two and the beginning of track three? And there's really not much time at all, so I'm gonna have to be really diligent with this because track two ends very abruptly and track three starts very quickly after that. But before I do that, I need to double check my level. Lucky for us, it looks like we're at a pretty similar level. So I think we won't have to adjust this too much, but that's one thing you have to be careful of. See, I didn't get it because this thing takes a minute to actually start recording. It's not gonna record the minute I hit go, like some decks might. This one's different. So now I need to go back, I need to rewind and listen so I can get to the end again. I think I got it. And if you think you got it, you just let it record. For the purposes of this video, I'll just stop real quick. I'm gonna go back and listen to see if I got it. We'll listen. Okay, here it is. 
I got it. So there you go. You just do that over and over again until you're satisfied with your mixtape. If you want to put this entire album on a cassette, you can do that also. The only thing you'll have to do is make sure you flip it over when side one is over and start side two. Kind of in a similar way we're doing with these individual tracks here. So that is how you make a mixtape with new or old. I like this because, you know, it's kind of fun to challenge yourself, get it right, and uh, makes a pretty good gift for somebody. Valentine's Day is coming up here. I'm going to post this one after Valentine's Day, unfortunately, but I did make my wife a mixtape using the method I showed you right here with a whole bunch of different vinyl records. I hope she likes it. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Next video is going to be me fixing this thing right here. It actually broke right before I started making this video. So subscribe if you don't want to miss how I got this thing to work. Very enticing, I know, but I'd appreciate it. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.